Hey everybody, uh, this is Dr. Dana Gibbs. Welcome to the Tuesday Live at 5.30. Um, today, I wanna talk about some myths that a lot of doctors still believe about thyroid treatment and Hashimoto's disease. So I'm Dr. Dana Gibbs. I'm an integrative physician here in North Texas and I help people address their thyroid and other hormone imbalances. So this is not meant to be individual medical advice and you should consult your own physician for any medical issues or diagnosis that you may have. All right, let's get to it because today I wanna talk about several myths that a lot of doctors still believe about um, Hashimoto's disease and thyroid function. And the first one is that TSH is the best way to test somebody for inadequate thyroid function. And in my uh, opinion, um, in my experience, that is not true. Um, so the ideal TSH um, in my hands is less than 1.0 when the published reference range goes all the way up to four and a half. Um, this issue um, is also the case that um, even if your doctor is checking the free T4, they may still miss a thyroid condition. So there are several different and more detailed labs that ought to be done um, besides just TSH. This problem gets even worse when doctors tell patients that their symptoms are just in their mind um, or offer antidepressants as a solution. Um, this was my personal experience, and I believed that for 20 plus years before I found out differently. Um, all right, so myth number two, most people with Hashimoto's disease do not need thyroid replacement. Um, fact is that actually any person who has symptoms of low thyroid should be worked up for thyroid replacement with synthetic T3 liothyronine or a combination product that contains liothyronine. So even if your TSH, your free T4 and your free T3 are normal, you can still have active disease and thyroid imbalance that will show once your doctor does um, the total T3 divided by reverse T3 ratio, which is what I use to determine whether somebody's thyroid function is doing well or not. Um, and even if that number is pretty good with Hashimoto's, this is an autoimmune disease. You can still have active autoimmune disease that will cause your thyroid hormone levels to go up and down as your thyroid gland gets damaged and releases large amounts of thyroid hormone. Um, and while it is true that significant numbers of people will recover um, without any treatment at all from Hashimoto's disease, the damage that has been done to their thyroid gland may be enough to require life lifelong replacement of their thyroid hormone in order to feel well. Um, and the disease can relapse as well. It is an autoimmune inflammatory disease. Um, and the people who continue in that inflammatory process can progress to near total dependence on thyroid replacement over their lifetime. Um, Next myth, diet changes don't do anything to help Hashimoto's disease. Fact, any diet that is reducing the tendency towards inflammation, um, primarily meaning processed food, um, will probably help someone with any autoimmune or metabolic disease feel better, not just Hashimoto's disease. Um, there are also certain nutrients that really help Hashimoto's disease patients recover. Um, and if a patient has unrecognized food sensitivities, um, then this becomes even more important. So there are no gold standard controlled clinical trials that are going to prove this fact. And there won't ever be for something like that because it has to do with what people actually eat on a day-to-day -day basis. There is no way to control for that um, and definitely no way to have a blinded trial of that. Um, anyway, the epidemiology trends are that whole food diets and those that avoid pro-inflammatory food 
allergens such as dairy, gluten, soy, even corn can definitely help. And also, um, it's really, really good to avoid the highly processed um, seed oils, the vegetable oils, soybean, corn, canola. Those are really, really pro-inflammatory and can cause a lot of problems. And then there are nutrient deficiencies, particularly some mineral deficiencies, B vitamins, that um, if you don't have enough of those, then you're definitely going to trend toward inflammation. Um, so really keto, paleo, Whole30, South Beach, and then these elimination and challenge diets, such as um, what I used to supervise while I was treating allergy every day, those can definitely help people lower inflammatory processes in their body, more fiber, more um, green and leafy vegetables. All of these things can really, really help. All right, next myth is you can't have hypothyroidism if you're not overweight. Um, I thought this for years. That was what I was taught in medical schools. Hypothyroid patients are overweight. Um, it's part of the reason I didn't recognize my own symptoms for what they were. Um, but you can really have almost any combination of the hypothyroid symptoms. Um, the problem with that is that most of the symptoms that go with hypothyroidism um, are very vague. They're broad. They, you know, like fatigue, it can be any number of things. And so doctors are just like, oh, well, you're not anemic. You must be depressed. Um, but truthfully, if you don't do a thorough thyroid check, you could be missing something. Um, anyway, next myth, levothyroxine is the best medicine for thyroid replacement. Um, well, this may be true for a lot of people. It's very simple. It's inexpensive. Um, and for about 80% of the people who try it, it works pretty good. Um, but this is not actually true in many cases. Um, and while it's adequate for a lot of people, many people, particularly those who have the kind of hypothyroidism where their TSH is actually normal, um, and positive symptoms respond much better to those kind of medicines that contain synthetic or natural T3 um, or a combination of lyothyronine and levothyroxine. So the bottom line with all of this is that hypothyroidism is not a cookie cutter disease with a cookie cutter treatment. Um, refinements in testing and individual attention from a knowledgeable doc trained in integrative thyroid techniques can help you feel better. So if your doc wants to do better, I have training that's available. Have them email me. If you're in Texas and you need somebody to listen and really get to the bottom of your symptoms, I am she. I would be honored and overjoyed to see you. So if you're in North Texas, you want a caring doctor to help you resolve your thyroid symptoms, come and sign up for my newsletter um, at www.danagibbsmd.com or you can apply now for a new patient evaluation with me. I have openings available for next month and I would love to see you. Take care, y'all. Have a great evening.